everybody to another episode of Command Combat Battle Reports. We continue the blood, guts, and glory tank aces campaign as American and German forces clash in the Lorraine Valley near Aircourt. Both sides are being scored based on how well each individual does in his battles. There is one player for each of three pads, green, red, and blue. The players are scored individually and as a team. Whichever team scores the most points wins the campaign, and the individual who scores the highest single points is the top tank ace. Today's battle is the rematch at Bainville au Mirrors. My apologies to the French for butchering your language. We're playing today at Game Empire, the land of a thousand games, one of the best game shops in L.A. The scenario today is corners. Chris is German set up in the town and past the hill, and Michael's Americans all bunched up in behind the hedges to the top left. Let's see what they do in the American first turn. He begins by firing at the tanks, hiding behind the house, and takes out one. The Germans were evidently making pie inside, and they're going to have to run outside and hop in their tanks to get this rolling. Chris is being very careful in lining up his tanks to get the best shots. But there are these things. I don't know what that does. Oh, that just blocks line of sight if it's, you know, for aiming. The ones behind the hill pop up over it and take their shots, taking out one of the American Shermans. The German tanks then all get back behind the cover. Michael's going to have a hard time chasing down those Germans. He moves one of his tanks over to the opposite side of the woods while the other tanks pick up the objective. It's armored plating, which is going to help those Bic lighters, I mean Shermans. Still, he's not going to take any chances, and he backs his tanks up from the hedgerows. On to the German turn two. They pick up their objective and get experimental optics, which are going to help them hunt down those Americans once they can get to them. He's moving the tanks so that are around the town down the road. <laughs> Tom? Oh, Tom. <laughs> and the ones on the hill he's putting into the forest. But oh, he rolls a oh. one, which bogs down one of his Panzer IVs. That's a real shame. So the American player picks up his objective and his letters from home, meaning he'll get one reroll to any motivation test. He seems to think he's got a good shot as he lines his tanks up along the hedge and fires. But it isn't enough to take out another Panzer. Chris is lining up the tank ace as he hides behind the chair. It looks like he's charging with all the rest of his tanks. Charging And he takes out one Sherman along the hedgerow. Then he takes out the lone tank that went out for the objective. It's a bad day for the Americans, and it's only going to get worse as the Germans push forward with their storm moves. The Americans fire back, but all they manage to do is stun one of the tanks in the town. Luck just is not with him today. But it does seem to be with the German player as he pulls up his objective and it's a visit from the general, which will allow him to re-roll anything he desires. That'll come in handy as his panzers work their way through the woods into the flank of the Americans. They all fire and they stun one tank and destroy another. Then they roll over for cover in the hedges. So this is how the battlefield is looking at the end of the German turn four. The Americans will need a miracle to turn it around. They move one around the rear of the panzers. Then they try to remount their tank. They fail, but they use the letters from home and get a reroll. Even a three wouldn't do it, but they have Patton on their side, so he slaps a guy and gets them moving again. He doesn't get far, though, because when he tries to cross the creek, he rolls a one, bogging him down. That's sad to see, especially since he didn't need to cross to get a shot. All right, let's see what the shot here. And the only operational tank fires and misses. 
The Germans don't even bother to move. They simply turn their turrets and fire. I might do the same. Wow. Taking out the last operational Sherman. So that's it for this round. The Axis get another victory and another campaign point due to Michael's incredibly bad luck. Chris now has 17 experience points, while Michael just reached his first ace skill. So we'll see next time what they choose. For now, let's hear what they have to say about this battle. Okay, well that battle didn't go as planned. Um, I was cornered in a little hedge, uh, or behind a hedge, and I tried to use, uh, make him come out to me rather than allow him to use his stormtrooper. My rolls weren't all that great, started good, ended not so good. From the get-go, I knew that I was uh, serving trouble in the position I was in because of Michael using the hedgerows for defense. So what I decided to do is, like any other fixed uh, replacement, uh, charge it. And instead of, uh, and I used my forces that were in the town and more as a distraction to keep them there, whereas my uh, force that was outside of the town would go and pick off uh, the, the spare tank that Michael sent out and then just charge the actual uh, position that he was in. And I was counting on that creek uh, that split up his forces from mine to serve as a uh, sort of a, sort of a buffer uh, and, and to slow him down. So the Axis has come back with another victory. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Command Combat Battle Reports. Click on the part of the battlefield that you want to see, and be sure to subscribe and go to our webpage at www.commandcombatreports.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching, everyone, and happy gaming to y'all!